Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today I decided to bring this video where I'm going to be going over how to create a custom hook in React which allows you to fetch data from an API. Um, this is extremely useful and I actually don't see a lot of videos about it out there. I do have a video where I talk about how to create custom hooks. However, um, I feel like I needed to create a video explaining this specific feature that you can make and add to your project because it is very useful and I feel like um, a lot of people simply don't know that this is something that you can do and that will be helpful for you. And um, for that reason, I wanted to make this video. You may realize that in this video, I'm using a camera and I want to use camera more in my videos. So for that reason, I, I decided to edit for this one. So before we get into the video, if you guys could leave a like and subscribe, I would massively appreciate it. Um, it would help push my videos to more people and uh, help the channel grow overall. So I'll be very grateful if you guys could leave a like and subscribe. And yeah, that's, that's basically it. Let's get into the tutorial. Okay, so um, the first thing we want to do is we're going to have a React project. So you can see over here, we have, um, we opened up our VS code and I actually already have a project kind of set up, but it's very, very on, it's like beginning stages. Um, you can see we only have an SRC folder and a few files inside of it. There's absolutely nothing inside of my uh, app component. So it's literally from the start, um, I just ran create React app and I created this project. And what I want to do is I want to I want to use this API over here. This API over here is the one that we're going to be using for this project. It is a public API, so it, it is free. And um, basically, it's a very simple API. All it does is you make an API call. It returns um, a, an object containing information about a joke. Uh, primarily, we're going to be working with the setup of the joke and the delivery. Um, the jokes are probably very cringy. I actually think there are like some offensive jokes here, so. It, trigger warning if you if you if you don't want to see them i'm not going to add them in the video um it's just a public api i don't choose the, the jokes but basically you can see we have a setup and delivery and that's basically what we're going to be doing we're going to create a hook that whenever you call that hook um, it will return to you three pieces of information about the api call it will return a boolean which we can call it loading which we can use to determine if the data is currently loading or not and if it's loading we can do something about it um, then we're also going to return the data that the API call um, returns. And we are also going to return an error variable, which will be populated based on if there was any errors during the API call. So the reason why we want to do that is because it, this kind of pattern is very, very common in, in any React application. Um, you'll have a component that needs a, an API call. So you create a use effect, it makes the API call. And the problem is you create three states one for the data, one for the loading, and one for the error. And the problem with that is because you're creating three states every single time you want to make an API call like this in a different component. So the best way to do this would be to create something like a custom hook or using a library which already does that, which I have videos in the past, so if you want to check it out. However, some people like to create their own hooks because it allows them to have more flexibility on what they're using, right? So you can see over here, we have our app. And the first thing I want to do is I want to create the, the file which is going to continue like contain the hook. Now you can call this hook whatever you want. Um, I you can call it use query or use fetch. Those are the two names that I see a lot. I'm going to be using use fetch. Um, because use query for me kind of reminds me of GraphQL. And this is not I'm, we're not dealing with GraphQL here. So I'm going to call it um, use fetch. And I'm going to create this component over here. Uh, so a hook is a component in React, but the difference is that in a hook you don't return um, GSX, so you don't return any any visual stuff, any UI. You only return data and states that you might want to use uh, when you make the API when you call the hook. So inside of here, um, we want to make a, an API call. So the way we think about it is we want to make an API call whenever we call this hook. So a way to do this is we use a use effect because it will trigger a function inside of it uh, based on the on the fact that this component was just rendered. So we use this use effect and inside of here, we want to make the API call to our API. You can use the normal fetch API that comes with JavaScript, but I want to use Axios, which I love using. It's a library out there that is very useful for many situations. So I actually already installed it. 
um, I just ran yarn add axios. But if you're using npm, just run npm install axios like this, and it should be fine. Um, axios is very useful. It's very famous as well. So um, you should probably be using it if you if you have a React app. So we're gonna import axios over here by saying import axios from the library axios, and over here, what we want to do is we want to make the API call by saying axios.get and passing the URL to our API um, endpoint, right? Which is this one over here. But the problem is we want to reuse this use fetch hook many times throughout our application for many different um, API endpoints. So we're not going to directly put the, the link for this API over here. We're actually going to um, grab uh, arguments in this uh, component, which Technically, if a component is a function, so you can grab arguments like this, it doesn't necessarily need to be um, like props, like in a normal React component. So we're gonna grab a, an argument called URL, which we can pass whenever we wanna fetch new data. And the URL that we pass over here is the URL that we're gonna pass whenever we call this hook. Um, and the good thing is that then, um, after we make the API call, we want to, um, we get the data, right? And we want to deal with the data inside of here. So to grab the data, we'll just grab the response. And inside of here, we can grab the data by saying response.data. Now, if you recall, I mentioned that usually you have three states, um, the, the data state, the loading state, and the error state. So we're going to still have those, but they're all gonna be inside of the hook so that you don't need to recreate them every single time you, you wanna make any other API calls. So let's create those states right now. Um, let's call the use state hook. And the first one will be the, the data. And initially it will be null. And the reason why I want to initialize it as null is because we actually don't know, uh, like not all data will be the same, right? We might receive data that is a, an array, we might receive data that is a, an object. So I, I'm just gonna initialize it, initialize it as null and be fine with it. Um, later on, we can deal with the case if it actually returns null. And the name of the state will be data, and the function which alters that state will be set data, like this. And then we're also going to create the other two states: the state that holds if um, the data is still loading, which we're going to call loading, um, and we're going to call the function set loading, and the state which holds any errors that occur during our request, and we're going to call that error and set error. Now loading won't be null because we know that loading will be a boolean. So we can just start it out as false and you'll see why. So let's think about it this way. We have our API request over here and we're making the request. Um, when do we want to set loading to true? How do we determine when the actual API call is being made and when it's done? Well, this over here is happening in a way so that we wait for this to happen to then um, continue forwards, right? So before we actually make the, the API request, we set a loading to be equal to true. And then um, instead of here, we, we deal with our data, which in our case will be just setting the data equal to response.data like this. So we're actually sending our data to the data we get from the request. And then um, after this, we can actually catch any errors that occur in our API request. And this, this is already handled by Axios. We just pass a, a catch. And inside of here, uh, what we do with this catch is we just set the error to be equal to the error that we grab from here. So we can just do something like this. And finally, uh, after all of this is done, it tried making the request. If it succeeded, it sets the data to the data that was returned from the API request. If there was an error, it will be cached inside of here and we will set the error to be equal to the error state. But we want to set loading to false regardless of it's, if it's succeeded or if there was any errors. So when you have a promise, you can do that by passing the finally case, which um, is just a function that will run um, after, like completely after, no matter what happens, um, after the promise is, is resolved. And over here, we just set um, the loading to be equal to false, like this. And this is all the logic that we really need. Um, the use effect does need a dependency array, and the dependency, the only dependency that we're gonna put here is the URL, because if the URL changes, then we wanna request the new data, right? Um, so that's basically it for having our use effect. 
now we need to return the the three states that we actually created inside of this hook and to do that we can do it in many ways um, I like doing it like this I'm gonna return an object and the object will contain the data the loading and the error and this is basically it this is actually the whole hook um, I'm just gonna delete it like this and now what we can do is instead of our of any other component in our application we can easily just come over here and just make a call to that hook by calling it use fetch like this um, and I do need to import use fetch from um, from the, the our, our SRC folder so I'm just gonna say import use fetch from um, dot slash use fetch and we do need to pass a URL to our API so I'm just gonna copy this over here and I'm gonna paste it inside of here as a, as a string and over here we can now destructure the data or the loading boolean or the error now if we don't need those information at any time we can just get one of them we don't need do we don't really need to actually access the loading the error and the data if we just need the, the data we can just grab the data and that's one of the coolest things about creating your own hook because you don't really need to reuse everything every single time and how do we handle this well we want to make the api call when we refresh the page when we enter into this page so we do need to check to see if the data is loading and what i like to do is i like to put a check over here checking if um, loading is true because while loading is true I'm gonna return something so many websites use like a loading spinner or a progress bar um, I'll just for now um, put an h1 saying something like loading like this and put three dots um, to represent that the data is currently loading um, then if there was any errors um, we can do something like if error uh, I just want to for now, just console log the error because I, I'm not sure like what the format of the error will be like. So if there is any errors, at least we'll be able to see it in our in our console. And finally, inside of our application, inside of our return statement with our JSX, um, what I want to do is I just want to have an, an H1 tag like this, and I want to display the joke. So what we do is we open and close curly braces like this to represent that we're writing JavaScript. And inside of here, I want to access the data. So I'll say data. And since we don't know if data is going to be null or true, what we do is we put a question mark, which represents like just just access this information if data is actually not null. So we'll basically just show this um, if data has been fulfilled. So we won't be showing anything if data isn't hasn't arrived yet. So we'll just put the question mark here and say data.setup because if you go to the API um, endpoint, you'll see that we had the setup property, which is inside of the object, and we also have the delivery. So what I want to do is I just want to show the setup, then I want to have like a, a, a colon and then show the delivery by saying data question mark dot delivery. And if everything is working, and if I come over here, it actually shows um, we have the setup for this joke, which is why did the koala get rejected? And we have the delivery, which is because it did not have any qualifications. Um, you see that the jokes are amazing here, um, but basically at least it, it's working and it's, it's working perfectly. We can just actually reuse this how many times we want. We can actually even change the, the name of the variable. So if we don't wanna call this data and we wanna call this joke or something like this, we can change the name of this by putting a colon over here and saying that this is now called joke. And instead of accessing data, we access the joke. Um, so we're just altering the name of the variable. We see that um, it still works perfectly. Um, it, it doesn't change anything, but we now have a new name for the variable. Now there's one thing that I wanna show you guys. Um, you can actually customize this hook to do a lot more. For example, you can actually create functions. For example, this won't work only for um, like creating a hook that only works for making an API call when you enter the page. You can actually um, create functions that trigger the API call. So for example, I'm gonna come over here and down here I'm gonna call a function called um, refetch. So like make another API request or just like fetch the data more. Um, and for this, it's what's basically gonna happen, it's literally the exact same thing, um, but inside of a function. And what we do is we just return the refetch as a function over here. And now if I want, I can come over here and I can just create a button 
like this um, say something like refetch and grab the refetch function that we just created over there uh, from our hook which we're now returning and inside of here we can just pass this refetch as the on click and you'll see that and with this we don't really need to refresh our page whenever we want to get another joke or make another API call we can just come to our page and you can see that there's this joke over here which coincidentally it's related to programmers but if we want to get another joke we can just click on this and it should show um, another joke for us thankfully this joke isn't offensive because trigger warning again I literally have been here trying to record the same segment a thousand times but I keep uh, like showing jokes that will definitely get this video demonetized so I don't recommend using this API um, unless you want to but yeah that's basically it this is this is the idea you can click on this button how many times you want you don't need to refresh the page and everything is contained inside of this use fetch hook that we created and we can reuse this so many times in our application without having actually to create all the states and just like uh, destructuring them from the re return statement from our hook which is really useful now that's basically it i really hope you guys enjoyed this video if you enjoyed it please leave a like down below and comment what you want to see next subscribe because i'm posting three to four times a week hopefully now that i'm actually out of work and i'm waiting for school to start i will start posting a lot more and yeah really hope you guys enjoyed it and i see you guys next time